Good morning, friends. It is seed starting Saturday, and it is your friend Lisa Mason Ziegler here. And I am, am glad to be here with you guys this morning because let me tell you, it is cold and wet here in southeastern Virginia this morning. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit here. So welcome to another seed starting Saturday. And today we're going to do our weekly sunflowers. You know, I've got those here for us to do. And I'm going to talk today a little bit about, is it too late? When is it too late to start seeds? Because this is the time of year that we just start getting so many people reaching out and sending in messages and asking on social media, oh my gosh, I haven't started my XYZs. Is it too late? And Anyway, friends, we're going to talk about that because that's really just all a myth. I mean, when you become a commercial grower, you realize that why was I even thinking that for all those years? The pressure we put on ourselves, right? So um, I have a lot to tell you about this morning. So this is the end of an incredibly big and busy week. Um, I mean, it feels like all my weeks are busy and I'm sure it seems that way to people. Wait a minute, y'all. I'm just going to silence my phone that always seems to interrupt us. Um, I mean, we stay busy here at the Gardener's Workshop year round, but this is a particularly busy week for several reasons. And so the first big news or the big relief that will happen, let's say in less than 48 hours from now, is I hit the send button on the manuscript, the whole manuscript, for my book. Um, the actual initial deadline was last weekend, but my editor emailed me, I mean, what a gift, and said, hey, I'm going on vacation for spring break, so I'm not even going to be looking at what you send in on your deadline, which was last Monday, so you have another week. And I was so grateful for that because you're never really re ready. Um, one of the things that you learn when I started hanging out with other professional writers is that you're never done editing. There's always things that you can eliminate words or you can change the way you say something or you remember something that you didn't think of when you were writing it. Um, and so you're never really ready, you know, as far as being ready to send it in, right? So I will be sending it in. Um, I'll do it probably either um, late, 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 Easter night, Sunday night, if I'm not too exhausted, um, because I have two family dinners here at my house on Easter, both sides of our family, different crews um, for lunch and then for supper and or early Monday morning. Anyway, it's a really big deal. And I want to just tell you guys, you know, which we're going to be announcing and releasing the cover of the book and the name. But I just want to tell you that reading through the first half of it, because that's what I'm doing now is just going through and reviewing and making sure all the um, layout is correct and all that kind of stuff on the document. Um, this book is going to be really awesome. It is my secret sauce to what I do. And um, whether you're a home gardener or a flower farmer, and now my iPhone watch is talking to me y'all. I don't, I don't know how to make that be quiet. So anyway, I'm just so excited. So that book will be coming out February of 2024. But here, after we get over this week and all the work it's created, we'll be setting it up to start a wait list for the book and to tell you what it's all about. Um, and, you know, Jessie, who is my co-host here, but y'all don't ever see her. She's behind the scenes uh, and a little under the weather this morning. I thank her so much for, you know, towing the line and being here. Um, Jessie helped on, contributed to the book and um, just so grateful for that. And the other, one of the other big things this week was we announced and launched a new commercial soil blocking line to our lineup of soil blockers, the Swift Blocker. And that was huge, y'all. It was so very, very huge. And I want to say that um, I did demonstrations in a special live Thursday night in the app and then again a little bit on the Friday show. So you can go in the app and go to the Thursday evening um, live 
bring it up. And when it comes up, it'll say shop all at the bottom, hit shop all. It'll show the products I talked about and you can touch the product and the video will jump right to that demonstration. And I'm here to tell you that if you're a commercial grower, these swift blockers just make efficiency, bring it to a whole new level. And I've already, I'm tweaking my technique. Um, and so look forward to that coming along. And we'll do that here probably on a seed start on Saturday. Um, so that was a really huge, and I just can't tell you how nervous I was doing it live because I haven't been doing that for 25 years. Like I have soul blocking and seed starting and talking about flower farming, right? So it was kind of a reminder to me how nervous people are when they first learn something new. Um, and then, of course, the third crazy thing that happened this week was that my course is now available. Um, flower Farming School Online, The Basics, Annual Crops, Marketing, and More. We have launched it with a special introductory offer where you get two mini workshops um, one by me, the Cool Flowers Beyond the Book workshop, um, and also Ellen Frost preparing to sell to florist. You get those as our gift when you purchase it. Um, so you can learn more about that over at thegardenersworkshop.com. And y'all, we have taken my course um, and just tweaked it into a tool that you can use as part of your business and as it develops and grows. And um, would love to have you join us in school. Um, and remember that the there are some special offers over in the phone app um, with the Swift Blockers and our complete seed starting kit for home gardeners and small growers. Um, the special offer is there's no additional shipping. You just pay a $9.95 flat fee shipping because it costs more than $9.95 for us to ship it to you. And um, normally there would be additional shipping, but in the app, when you purchase it before Sunday at 8 a.m., you get it with um, no additional shipping. So I'm going to sow the sunflowers first and then we'll do and maybe I'll start my chit chatting about um, seed starting. So if you are new here to us and we're just really excited about how many new followers um, that we get. And, you know, if you join me every week and you aren't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you do. So more subscribers lead to a lot of things. Um, and one of them being is that YouTube knows that people like me, so they show my show to more browsers. Um, that's kind of what reviews do on podcasts and on products and on books and such. Um, so I really appreciate when you subscribe and comment and share it and invite your friends. Um, and um, sorry, y'all. Um, so if you're here new joining us, welcome aboard. If you're not familiar with us, thegardenersworkshop.com is our home base. That is our website that just is the base for all of our online courses, our online garden shop, um, tons of free resources, my blog. You can connect with our sister podcast, Seed Talk with Lisa and Lane, which is just people are just loving that. It's got a great slideshow that goes with it that Lane prepares that you can watch on YouTube. Um, so we have a lot of great information because y'all, our real mission is just to help people at all levels grow cut flowers, whether you're a home gardener, a beginner flower farmer, or somebody that's gotten in and started selling and now you're in over your head and you need some help kind of finding your way. That is us all the way. So what is today? Today is April 8th. Can you believe it? All right, so we start sunflowers every week and we do it here together um, because here's the bottom line if you're a flower farmer. It's the day in, day out, boring work that brings in the cash flow. Um, consistency is a superpower and not everybody has it because, you know, one of the things that I used to hear, especially back when we first launched Flower Farming School, some newer flower farmers, you know, that had been in for two or three years, um, they weren't saying it to me, they were just saying it on social media, that, you know, why in the world would I be teaching more people to flower farm? You know, there's already too many flower farmers. Well, A, that's not true. They're, as long as we're importing billions of dollars of cut flowers into the United States alone every year, there is no ceiling for professional. That's the key word difference between 
the big ocean and then the little ponds. Um, the ponds are the pros and the big ocean are a lot of folks that just don't have the tools, the knowledge and the experience um, to really build a successful business. And the top of that list is consistency. So starting these sunflowers every single week is one of those said tasks and it's boring and it's not very glamorous, but you got to do it. You can't sell them if you don't start them. And y'all, I'm sorry, I got to grab a tissue. I am getting a um, itchy, runny nose here, and I'm sure it's that soil. Let me tell you this before we jump in. So I don't know if you follow along with us on social media, but I've been talking about the fact that I have over 12,000 seedlings. 99% of which are warm season, which it now in perfect Virginia normal behavior, it has gone from 70 degrees to 75 during the day to now down in the 50s and colder at night, which means none of these can go outside. This whole building has trays everywhere. So insult to injury, I didn't realize this till I came out here this morning, the majority of them are sitting on the big, the, the portable tables that I use for our big family dinners that I have to take in my house this afternoon and get ready for meals tomorrow. So now all the trays are sitting around on pallets of product that are stored here because our warehouse is busting at the seams. Anyway, this is just another day in life, right? I mean, everybody's got it. All right. So. We start sunflowers every single week, and I typically, back in our high production years, we did 10 trays of 128s a week to have 1,200 sunflowers a week for at least 26 weeks. Now that we grow a garden, a cut, big cutting garden for educational purposes, um, we don't start so many. So we only start one tray, and I'll talk more about the tray and what's in it and all that in a minute. We start one tray of 128s, and I'm going to put three different varieties of Pro Cuts. I grow Pro Cuts um, because they are the quickest to seed from seed to bloom and have a lot of different colors and options. Stiff necks, most of them, and um, just really, really like them. All right, and this is Bouquet Mix. So the secret to having your timing Perfect, meaning you don't come upon a week where you don't have any sunflowers to cut. And let me tell you, after you're used to having sunflowers the perfect size to beef up your bouquets or to sell at farmer's market or for your commercial customers, and then boom, out of the blue, you they're not ready. It's because usually people trade up or change the varieties or the colors. So I always shoot to plant one particular color or mix of colors every single week. So that timing is always on, on point because even within a family like Pro Cuts, the colors can vary by a few days and sometimes those few days will take you down. All right, so I'm, I'm um, identifying what I'm planting in this tray because you wanna know, because we cut most often, I mean, even sometimes before they're really open, you can't really tell what they are. So we always like to know so we can keep them together when we're planting. I do not um, mark them in the garden, but for planting purposes, we of course want the date on there. So we'll know which order they're supposed to be planted in um, because it's surprising how a two week old seedling tray can look so much like a three week old seedling tray. So you can't just look at them and say, oh, that's the oldest. Plant that this week. And that's what we try to do. It's that whole succession. I start some today. There should be some planted this week. We start some next week and there's a tray following the next week. That's three weeks previous, right? So you never just have a ton of stuff. And I was reading about that in the manuscript this morning. It's like becoming a succession planting gardener or farmer is like opening a whole new, not only a whole new door to gardening, but it stretches out the work. It makes you a better gardener. You don't, you aren't, it's not nearly as overwhelming. And y'all, I'm not kidding. My nose is killing me. I'm just trying to think what I messed with here. Maybe it's these poppies. 
Um, all right, so the sunflowers that I plant every week, we plant them in 128 trays. And that's what this is. And this is filled with not blocking mix, not our special recipe for soil blocking, but for um, it's 50% of any seed starting mix or not seed starting, any potting soil, which is much more economical, um, and 50% peat moss. And then it's in a 128 plug tray. And that's one of the things that's really cool about the new Swift blockers. Um, so I never soil blocked sunflowers because first off, we just, we start such a volume. Um, plug trays are just the most efficient and economical and quick way to do it, right? But with the new Swift blocker, the Swift Mini 27, that makes an inch and a half block and it makes 27 of them, which you can fit two of those sets on a cafeteria tray. So that's 54. So it just really depends on where you are in your size of how many you want to start. Um, I would still use plug trays for the volume that I want to start. But for a smaller size farmer or an overzealous gardener, that Swift 27 is the ticket. In fact, I have one right here. I'll show it to you. I still have everything sitting around. This is the Swift Mini 27, and that's a sunflower that's the perfect size to be planted, right? And so, you know, if if becoming totally block-free, I mean, not block-free, plug tray-free, no plastics, that's the goal of the Swift blocker. I mean, not only to make it easier, more efficient, um, and more, the wind is really blowing here, y'all. Um, and just making it more efficient to be able to be more environmentally friendly. friendly. Um, but I will say that the Mini 27, even for an ambitious home gardener, for if you start large numbers of large size seeds, it works really great. So I'm going to start with peach today. Peach is one that um, I don't plant every week, but it's still a great color. What am I thinking of when I'm selecting which colors um, I'm going to plant? I'm thinking, when, what season are they blooming in? So these are still going to, they're 60 days. So April 8th today. So the 1st of June, these should be blooming, right? And so we are still coming out of spring. We still have a lot of cool flowers. So that's why I'm planting the peach because it's kind of a softer, easier color to use with those pastels of spring. And then as we move into summer, you won't find me probably, I won't say never, but normally, depends on the demand, but of course we're not even selling our flowers anymore that way. Um, but it depends on what Suzanne tells me that we need basically. Um, I moved to the other, the, the oranges, some of the bicolors and, um, as we get into summer, the, the classic orange sunflower, which is the Pro Cut Orange or the Pro Cut Horizon, those are really the same color. The Horizon just faces its bloom upright. Um, that's too many. That those are the cla those are my go-to during summer. That's back when we were in high production. That's the only color I grew. Um, when you're producing 10 to 15,000 stems of flowers a week for 23 florists, two supermarket chains, and a um, on-farm members-only market, a bouquet subscription, you don't need any more confusion than you already have naturally <laughs> by all of that. So back then, I only grew orange. And guess what? We sold out every single week for 1,200 stems between our florists supermarkets, for our mixed bouquets, for everything that we would use them for. So what I learned is that having diversity sometimes in a standard flower like that is more to satisfy our need to have something different than our commercial, than our customer's view of it. Um, all right, so what's next? The bouquet mix. Now the bouquet mix, which we've been selling a lot of these, y'all, um, we just had to do a huge order for sunflower seeds. We make all of the pro cut mixes in house. Um, and so the bouquet mix has four orange pro cuts. It has the pro cut orange I just mentioned and the pro cut horizon, which looks just like orange, but the bloom face is more upright. Y'all think about making bouquets and you have that hole in the top. This is the perfect sunflower. If I was in high production right now, 
and I was only growing one sunflower, it would be Procut Horizon. No question. Because most flowers face this way. Having some upward facing flowers and bouquet work is like a gift. Um, so it has those two, but it has two additional ones. It has, oh my gosh, Pro Cut Brilliance. Brilliance is the orange sunflower with a yellow halo around the disc. Totally glows. And then there's Orange XL. And Orange XL is a different hue of orange. And the reason we called it the bouquet mix, you could grow this mix and make a beautiful sunflower bouquet. And when they're all there next to each other, you can definitely see a difference. Um, I love them all. Brilliance, um, I have to say, is one of those sunflowers. Every time I see it in the garden, you know, when they're starting to open and there's a bunch of them. And I mean, when the, that at hour before sunset at night, they call it the golden hour for taking pictures. These things glow in the dark glow. I mean, they're just so very, very beautiful. Truly, truly love those guys. All right. So we're doing bouquet mix. And then my go to um, also is the gold light. The gold light pro cut um, is a golden color. No, oh, I can't hold on to anything. Is golden color and um, versus the orange. And then the central disc is kind of gold with chartreuse green disc in the middle. Oh my gosh. And let me tell you, when you grow this space the way that we space them, people don't even think they're um, sunflowers. They think they're Gerber daisies. Um, and it is one of the things that we learned through the years with our commercial customers is when our zinnias start, the very earliest zinnias, our florist used to cancel their standing orders of Gerber daisies. Then when the sunflowers of the perfect size started, I mean, we sold 20 and 30 bunches a week to some of the high volume florists because sunflowers just last so darn long, y'all. And when you have these cool colors in the right size, small, they're just so versatile to use, right? Y'all can't tell you how freaked out my dog is. Um, Tucker came from a, what we call a puppy mill. Um, I got him when he was two and a half years old, which means they don't get socialized. And when they miss that step in life, they just have odd things. They aren't conditioned and they just, anything new freaks them out, not particular things. And that's Tucker. He's a wonderful boy, but we have these people working in our house on our addition and odd noises. He's just squirrely right now. He has been standing over here to my right with his ears pinned back since I started this. Just breaks my darn heart. Anyway, and I'm not tranquilizing him because that would be 24 seven. He, he does all right. I mean, I handle it, but anyway. All right. So I have put all the sunflowers on the surface and now I'm just taking my fingers and pushing them down. I just dropped one seed onto every cell and I'm pushing them about halfway down into the cell to provide darkness and that the soil will cover the seed and give sunflowers the darkness they need to sprout properly. And um, so we, our sunflower mix soil is a big old one of those big black tubs you see at the big box stores that have the yellow tops on them. And these trays sit down inside of it perfectly, or actually the, the tub is bigger. So Bobo and I take one big bag of potting mix and one big bag of compost, and she pours on one side and I pour on the other, and then we mix it up. And so when I go to make my sunflower trays, and this is really important if you're doing lots of them to make it super simple. A, that tub should be up on a bench or something so you don't have to bend over to do that job. And um, so you just can drop your, um, maybe oh, I must have touched something. So you can just lay your tray in there and fill it up quickly. Be sure and clean the top off well. Soil is expensive, right? Um and that makes it super simple and fast. So now we have this tray that they're pushed down in there. Now I'm going to, um, after we get off here, I will take this into the grow room, my grow room, where you could take it outside, use a watering can with a sprinkler head on it, and water this in really well. And after you think it's watered really well, 
dig your finger down into one of the cells and make sure it really is watered all the way through. Then it gets popped onto a seedling heat mat. Sunflowers that are started with great heat, which is what seedling heat mats do, sprout quicker, but more importantly, they grow a vigorous root system fast. So they encompass that soil that's in the cell so that in two and a half weeks or so, two and a half seems to be our magic time, no more than three weeks, you can pull on that stem and it is rooted deeply in roots and you can just pop it right out of the cell and plant them. That's what makes them quick and efficient and easy to take care of. If you're having to stick a stick in and pry the plant out, you don't have a strong enough root system or you're trying to do it too early. And if it's taken longer than three weeks, then their growing conditions are not conducive to what sunflowers really want, which is bright and hot, um, which would be under a grow light if it's still cold, too cold outside um, or outside in the full blast and sun, protected from varmints like birds and rabbits and squirrels. Um, if you have those issues. Um, so then I'll put it on the seedling heat mat and once 50% show that neck coming up, I take them off of the heat mat and do what I just mentioned under grow lights or outside, whichever your conditions um, provide for. Then if they're inside under grow lights, I try to get them outside for at least a week before they go out to the garden, right? And um we plant them out into the garden, into beds with, we do not use beds that have film on them or mulch um, because it's not necessary. Think about these sunflowers go from seed to bloom in about 55 to 60 days. When you plant them at three weeks old, a third of their life is already done. So we find that by preparing the bed, we put in organic dry fertilizer. You can find that on our website. And um, if you, um, to prepare the soil, we do not use film. We do not use any kind of mulch. We plant five rows of sunflowers. Our beds are 30 inches wide, five rows across the bed, and the, the plants are six inches apart in the row. So that makes them about six inches apart in all directions. And that grows the perfect size sunflower. Y'all, you control the size of the sunflower by how far apart you space them. If you space those same sunflowers 12 inches apart, the heads would be this big. You don't want that for, for bouquets. You want like this. You want a, just a nice small size sunflower head. We water them in by hand with a wand when they're planted. And because we get about 51 inches of rain a year, we don't find it necessary to water again. So there's no irrigation down. You have to remember, we grew on so many, so much volume of sunflowers that, I mean, we had to find all the shortcuts so we could plant 1,200 a week in addition to harvesting and selling and delivering 1,200 a week, right? So we pushed it to the limits. No film on the bed. We do lay down netting for our spacing, but that netting is immediately taken up when the planting is over. We water them in well, and then we do nothing else. We do not flower support our sunflowers. They should be supported. If you're a super small grower or a home gardener, I 100% recommend you can't afford to lose sunflowers. We take a calculated risk by you know, getting these rolled through storms where torrential rain will come and it'll knock down half of them. Um, and we're willing to risk that because the amount of work it would take for us to either make beds and film and put down irrigation and then net them. I mean, we would never be able to do that. So we found that that works for us. But I will say for the bigger grower you are, the more that works. The smaller a grower you are, the risk gets higher and higher because you can't afford, if you're only planting 50 a week, you can't afford to lose 42 of them in a torrential rain or a windstorm that comes through. And that's what happens here. So, and then we plant them every week. And that just kind of keeps us right on the money of, ooh, my dog is finally laid down, y'all. I'm not moving from here. I was going to get up and move this tray, but I'm just going to move it aside. Um, so I'm going to look and see what questions you have. But first I want to talk about, is it too late? And so the bottom line for this, I just can't wait for my book to come out, y'all, because I would just say you need to read the book. You have to figure out something a little bit. Once you figure out what I'm just going to suggest to you, it'll assist you for the rest of your gardening or farming life. 
you have to know the difference between a cool season and a warm season annual. And then that there's there's two different kinds of annuals and they have very different needs, even though they classically only live for one year. They're just planted at very different times. And then you have to figure out when your conditions are at the right time for that family. You know, warm season for me, we start planting. I mean, my last typical expected frost date is April 15th. And that doesn't mean it's warm enough for warm season annuals. That just means it doesn't usually drop below 32 after that date. But, you know, you can't count on that. I typically start planting warm season tender annuals out into an open field with no heroics two weeks after that date. So the 1st of May. So I can plant warm season tender annuals from the 1st of May through September. And it is all about how many days till the flower blooms and before your last your first fall frost. And I don't want to get too complicated with this, y'all, but it's like we plant zinnias and sunflowers and coxcomb and azuratum and basils and, I mean, all this stuff. Grasses, all of our, gosh, this morning when I came out here, Bobo started grasses on Thursday, about six different ones. They all germinated, which means they need grow lights. So I had to like, that's why I had to bump more plants from my grow room under good grow lights to out here in the open room where I just leave these lights on 16 hours a day because it's just too cold. It's 52 degrees outside. That won't kill my plants, but it does not make them happy and it sets them back. It stresses them. They're better in here where it's warm with lower light than to go outside and be cold. Um, anyway, and grasses. We start them over and over again until like midsummer for where I am. I mean, and then there's even things that we start past that date, you know, sunflowers you're growing vegetables, we're still starting squash in September because that's a quick crop. If you start to learn whether a, an annual is a warm or cool, and then take notice of how many days till it produces. And the days count is from the day you start the seed or plant it outside, from the day its life begins till it does something, till it fruits or flowers or whatever it is you're waiting for. So these are just tidbits of information that when you're armed with this stuff, once you know what your warm season planting time is, I mean, then you can start looking in packets. Oh, gosh, zucchini, shoot, I can still be planting that at the end of September. You could, I mean, that's when you're ready to like grow some vegetables to maybe put them up for the winter. You're not so hot and tired, right? You're rejuvenated a little bit. Um, and that's what we do in the fall is we start more squash and zucchini to actually freeze some in the middle of summer. If you, I mean, I'm ready to club people, right? With zucchinis and take them out. You know, you're just hot and tired and exhausted. And anyway, so understanding, I mean, you know, I don't have depth of knowledge in most areas, areas of flower, of growing. I just know what I have to know to be successful. And it changes everything. And it just takes away um, your, um, Work sure and now my phone, my my watch is talking to me. Um, it just it, it equips you so you don't that little. Oh, am I too late? No, you're not too late. And I will also say, except for those people that live in the most deepest northernest areas, there's almost always something to start. Pretty much most of the time. Um, so it's just you have to figure out what those things are and the best time to start them. And I didn't. I see somebody's question. Um, that Kelly asked, I did not finish um, the sunflowers. What I will do is take them in and water them with the sprinkler watering can. And that washes the soil off the walls where I pushed and will cover the seeds. So no, I do not add any more dirt. I do not find that necessary. And you know, it's little steps like that, that save, if you're a flower farm, if you're in business, it's all of this streamlining of how you do things, um, how you do things to prevent work later, right? So that's my story on, is it too late to start something? You just really, you just, it's really basic information. And once you know it, sure oh my gosh, I'm going to kill this watch. My goodness, y'all, technology. So I'm going to look at some of these questions that Jesse has starred for me. Start, let's see. Susan asks, 
Lisa, when starting Snapdragons, do you put them in soil blocks or plug trays? Thank you. That's a great question, Susan. Soil blocks all the way. I use plug trays, very, very limit, limited. Um, basically, for any, for any, up until the Swift blockers now, so that can all be subject to change, right? Because the Swift blockers make many look. So first off, this is the Swift blocker mini 27. This is kale. This is ornamental kale. This is not the right time of the year to start it, y'all. This was for pitchers. And we plant, we start this in midsummer to plant in fall to have blooming, not blooming, but the ornamental kale heads are gorgeous and they grow really tall. These are the cut flower varieties. Well, the way you get them to grow really tall and straight is you put multiple seeds in, let me get a good one here. You put multiple seeds, I used to do it in a plug tray. You put multiple seeds in one cell pack or one block. Look at those roots. And it gets planted just like this. And it gets planted at the six inch spacing like I do everything else. Instead of having to plant a plant every two or three inches, I plant three every six inches and it has the same effect. So I use the small mini blocker, the one that we use, the ones that we, the like this. I'm surrounded in blocks, y'all. Remember, they're all out here. These are tomatoes. This is the small blocker, which is the three-quarter inch. This is what I normally, that's what I start sun, um, snapdragons in and all of our celosias. And look at this. This is mahogany splendor um, hibiscus, which is a foliage, that maroon, beautiful foliage. This was started April 3rd, five days ago. That's the small blocker, and they will grow in this block until they go out to the garden. The key is they grow super fast in these small blocks that you time it right. If I'd have started these three weeks ago, they'd be out growing their block by now. But these are going to be hitting when they're coming into their perfect size. They're, it's going to be okay to plant them outside. So we start snaps in the small blocker. Um, you could start them actually in the Swift Mini 75, but we have been starting them in the small blocker for all these years with great success. So I hope that helps you. Beth, hey, congratulations, TGW team. Thank you for all you do and look forward to your new book next year. Question, with the LED 4,500 to 6,500 shop lights, will they work for growing the seedlings. So first off, I am no expert on grow lights. Grow lights is a rabbit hole you can go down in and never come out. Um, we actually use fluorescent lights. I prefer them because they give off a little bit of warmth and a different kind of light. Um, so, But I absolutely know nothing about LEDs. That doesn't mean that they're not good. It just means I've never used them. Um, and the, the, the one difference that we hear reported from people is that especially if you're not growing in a warm room, a room that has significant air temperature control, um, is the LEDs give off absolutely no warmth. And the little bit of warmth that those fluorescents that we use, and you can find them on our website, they're T12s, um, they give, you can put them like right above the canopy of the plant, and it's just enough warmth that I definitely feel like it aids in warming our seedlings and helps them to grow more. Um, so I'm sorry, I cannot help you on the LED lights. I did want to show you all this. Look at this. This is, we are in Sweet William Heaven. You can see, if you watched the show yesterday inside the app, um, I show a bunch of the Sweet Williams. This is the sweet, look how tall it is. Um, this is the sweet variety of Sweet William. It's got like 12 different colors. This is black cherry and it is gorgeous. And so why would you grow as many varieties of Sweet William as we have on our website and that I grow? Because guess what? The sweet blooms earlier than Amazon and Electron and all the others. So you just have to time it um, really right. What soil temp do you plant your first tray? So Polly, I'm not sure if you're talking about outdoors, I would guess, and you're talking about warm season. Um, so I really go more by air temperature, but the soil temperature, basically the, the, the air temperature that I go for is when nighttime temperatures 
are above 60 degrees and holding. You have to look at a two week. And when that happens, typically the soil temperature is about 60 degrees. Um, and so it's the nighttime temperatures is what dictates when I plant. I mean, I look at that two week forecast and that's why all these seedlings are in here. When I looked, I was so unprepared. We were in the seventies last week. And when it dropped two days ago, oh my gosh. I mean, I was out here dragging these all back in. And anyway, so 60 degree air temperature at night indicates that the soil is getting to about 60 degrees, which is when I want to plant. Betsy says, the zinnias seem large for the three quarter inch block, but I started them in the three quarter cosmos too. So Betsy, we have started, um, I'm just sitting here looking, I don't have any in here. Um, we have started tens of thousands of zinnias in the three quarter inch block for all these years of flower farming. And the secret is they're just like sunflowers. We plant them at about two and a half weeks old and, um, it's all about timing. So you would never, we just started starting our, I'm just sitting here thinking, I don't have any zinnias that are full. We have a bunch started in there in the three quarter inch block, but they're just cracking now because they can't be planted for a couple of weeks, right? So that is the secret. Now I do have here zinnias in the mini 75. So this is the mini 75. And these were all made in one, the tool is this long. I mean, this is made in one put, one fill and one push. And these are a little smidgen less than one inch. But according to Dan, the maker of the blocker, the designer and manufacturer, that this block has twice as much soil volume. I believe that's what he told me, which makes a big difference. And this means you can sit these, these zinnias here, which still look great. When were these planted? These were planted March 11th. So they're almost four weeks old. You, They would not look like this in a three quarter inch block. But on this tray, this is 75. If you start with three quarters, you can get a hundred on there. It's all about where you are in your business. Do you want to be quick and efficient? And you might have a lots of endless space like in a greenhouse. But if you're like me in a tiny little space, I'm still thinking, all right, I definitely have uses for this mini 75. But I'm still going to start some stuff in this three quarter because I don't want to lose 25 plants. A ladybug just crawled off this. Um, so it's all about perspective and where you are in your walk. So here is a great example of how I'm using the 75. Here's another tray of the mini 75s. These are peppers. And these are ornamental peppers and we grow these as cuts. This is the rooster pepper. And if you aren't on the wait list in the app, we grow this seed. These are like spectacular cut flower stems. Um, we typically start in the three quarters and then bump them up because we like our peppers to be bigger before we plant them out. And that will not be necessary. These peppers were started in this three, this block, the mini 75, and they will finish in this block. So this is a huge efficiency step for us. Um, so, you know, nothing fixes everything. I often get asked, if you only had one, what would it be? Well, that's just really difficult to answer because there's situations where all, some are better than others. And it just depends on where you are in your business, right? So hope that helps you. So yes, we start the Cosmos. I have those started too somewhere. Sorry, there's just none within reach of me here. Yes, we start Zinnias and Cosmos in the three quarter inch block. So Cassie asks, do you have suns in the ground under cover right now? Yes, the first three weeks that we've started together are outside. And so we haven't gone below, I think it was 41 last night. We haven't gone you know, down to dipping and it won't kill the sunflowers. It just chills them. So yes, we do have sunflowers in the ground. Question, how exactly would florists want to receive flowers? In buckets with water, dry in packages, what kind of package paper and boxes what should the delivery look like? Well, Mike, that is like a whole section in my course, um, a whole session. Um, and so everybody should be getting their flowers and water by going into boxes. 
Um, it really affects how their longevity and their long life. Um, but yes, delivering them in containers with water um, is definitely beneficial. And um, so that's one of the things that I talk about. I mean, we go through how to look like the pro that you should be. Um, and one of the things I was sh I shared last week, I think, when we were talking about my course in one of my Q&As about it, um, is one of the things you don't want to do, or you can, it's up to you, surely, but if you want to become, if you really think you want to become a professional flower farmer, cut flower grower, the worst thing you can do is to go in and introduce yourself to the local florist and not be the pro. Um, you know, going in, not prepared, going in with your buckets, not looking like they should, not having your list and you're not having the, 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 the classic wholesale correct pricing. You don't go in there and ask them what are they paying or what will they give you? People actually do that and then wonder why, you know, then the floors question them on everything because it looks like you don't know what you're doing because you don't. And, you know, I was... I made this comparison years of last year, I think this would to do for people to launch into flower farming and approach commercial customers, not knowing, not being trained, not having learned what to do would be like me waking up this morning and saying, you know what? I think I'm going to open a copy machine store. I'm just going to go rent a space and buy some copy machines not knowing anything. I mean, that's literally what it's like because people think because they can just grow flowers in their backyard that it's just so simple to do. And you can certainly do that. But I can tell you, those aren't people that are still flower farming and getting a profit um, after a year or two. Um, so, Mike, if you really want to learn how to become a pro, um, there's courses and our website is full of it. And that's what my the basics it's all about, about starting your foundation, which is not warm and fuzzy. It is where the rubber meets the pavement and helps you to be successful in that way. Will two 128 trays fit on a large seedling heat mat? Um, if you're talking about our large seedling heat mat, I believe so. Um, I know that a one flat tray will almost fit on our small heat mat. Um, I don't know. I guess they're nine by... 20, I would guess. Um, so I would just measure them and see maybe. Is Rudbeckia a cool season flower going into winter here in South Africa? Hi, Janet. You know that I've had students in South Africa um, and my first year, and it was such an interesting journey with her um, just to hear about the differences and the problems that she faced. Her closest market was like 10 hours away or something. Um, anyway, so Rudbeckia is a cool season hardy annual and it prefers to get, now there are perennial Rudbeckias and there's cool season hardy annual Rudbeckias. Um, the ones that we grow and as cut flowers are cool season and they prefer to get um, established when it's cool to cold weather and then they bloom when it gets warm. So I hope that answers that question. Sunflower soil block mix. You said 50-50 potting soil peat, then later said 50-50 potting soil compost. So it depends on how you're starting them. If you're starting them in a plug tray, it's 50-50 any potting soil and compost. If you're starting them in a swift blocker in the one and a half or in the small two inch soil blocker, you use blocking mix. Um, because the blocking mix is all about the blocks holding and binding together. So whenever you use a plug tray for anything, we use 50% potting mix that you buy in a bag and 50% compost. Um, and we don't sift for that. So I hope that helps. Debbie, your sweet William that you showed earlier, were those planted in the fall with row cover, I think is what she's asking. So Sweet William is a super winter hardy. I think it's actually zone five, which is negative 10 degrees, I think. Um, and so they do not require row cover. Anything I plant in the fall does not require row cover. Those were planted in the fall and they were row covered during the polar blast 
the Arctic blast that came through here in December when we went down to 11 degrees, not because they needed it to survive, but it just kept the foliage from getting quite so damaged. Um, so yes, they're very, very winter hardy. Um, I do not sweet, just a sideliner about that particular variety. Um, my go-to variety is Amazon because they're taller naturally. They don't have all the colors, but they're typically taller and I can plant them in very early spring. And then we'll even do in another succession after that, if we have a need in the time, because they tolerate heat a little bit better. Sweet, on the other hand, really needs more time to elongate. So I only fall plant that. Um, and you can find and see all the colors on our website. So friends, I think I'm going to have to call it a day here. Um, just to remind everybody, that um, the special offer on the Swift Blocker shipping and the complete seed starting. If you're a home gardener, we have our complete seed starting kit over in the app, which that's the, the grow light, the heat mat, the row cover, the soil blocking um, kit that comes in at my online course, taking you from beginning to end um, with no additional shipping. The shipping is just $9.95 um, and it's a grow light. Did I say that? A tabletop 24 inch grow light. Um, the for fertilizer, the burlap, it even comes with a sample fungus gnat fighting kit. Um, right now is the special offer with that. So you'll find all that over in the app. And if you don't have the app, you can just go to your phone app store, search Gardener's Workshop. It's free. Download it. Go to yesterday's show. And again, a little shop all comes up when the video starts. If you hit that and scroll to the product you're interested in, it'll jump right to that part of the video, which isn't always foolproof, but we try to help it be that way. Um, so friends, I appreciate you being here and I can't wait to tell you next week that the manuscript is gone. And um, the formatting of the, the manuscript is huge and we still have until June 30th for imaging. So the party is not over. It's just for me, I always say the part that I'm doing currently on a book is the hardest part. The photos, the images, getting what we need for images in the garden to take the picture of is pretty trying, but that's a lot of fun too. So friends, I'm going to go take care of seedlings. Um, oh, that's right, Jesse. thank you. Um, so this week... Um, on Ask a Flower Farmer on Wednesday in Instagram, which is at 1230 Eastern time. Guess who's taking over? Our good friend, Dave Dowling. And y'all talk about the walking encyclopedia. If you have any questions, ranunculus, anemones, tulips, dahlias, lilies. I mean, he knows everything about everything, but that's kind of his mantra. Um, and he can help you with any struggles you're having right now. So show up on our Instagram feed at 1230 on Wednesday. You can catch the replay, but you can't ask him questions then. Um, so be there or be square. And Dave is just a wealth of information. His course, Flower Farm and School, Bulbs, Perennials, Woodies, and more, is literally an encyclopedia of all those topics that I just mentioned. Um, so friends, I think... That's all I want my, um, my dog, I think is finally asleep, y'all. That's all that I have um, on my list for today. Remember to check out the Swift Blockers, which I think are just the perfect addition to the commercial growers, especially if you have a greenhouse. Um, and we're just finding it to be fast and efficient time saver. I mean, if you're making tons of little blocks and you're fighting, keeping them moist and getting them in the ground on time, this is the ticket for you. So friends, until we meet again and happy Easter to everybody. Blessings to all. Ciao.